right, everybody. Welcome to the Aaron Davis Show, formerly known as the Evo Sex Show. I have my co-host, Cliff Byerly, <laughs> and we have a special guest. His name's Eric Davis. How you doing, Eric? Thanks for coming on the show. Man, I'm doing great, man. It's it's good to be back on the show since I was pushed out this last episode. Yeah. I, I, Again, I, I really appreciate you. I'm honored to be on the show with awesome. with, with Cliff Byerly and Aaron Davis. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that we're going in a, a better direction with just me running the helm and then Cliff as, as my co-host. So sorry, Eric, you, you just weren't cutting it. <laughs> All right. Good, good, good flanking maneuver, Aaron. You're starting to think, you're starting to think like an infantryman, right? Yeah. I flank, I flanked you guys. Welcome to the evolution security podcast with the tactical twins, Aaron Davis and Eric Davis, who is the real co-host and our awesome guest, Cliff Byerly, who we're honored to have on for a second time. He kicked our butts, um, roughly, um, two months ago, I think. And we've had him on to go over some of the goings on in that Awesome, awesome class. We went away smarter than we walked in the door and and had new friends and, and had a blast with Cliff. So, buddy, um, Eric, why don't you go ahead and, and bring Cliff in and, and let's start the conversation about that course. Awesome. Well, well ladies and gentlemen, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do an act after action review of the complete complete combatant class sorry tripping over my words that that cliff hosted in uh, alabama just outside birmingham and man what an incredible course folks if you are serious about self-defense you got to seek out cliff he should be on the top of your list because he's going to make you um a, i mean harder to kill for sure and cliff Man, thank you so much for having us down there for that course. It, it, it was an incredible learning off opportunity. Oh, I appreciate that, guys. I'm glad you guys could uh, make it down and we could finally meet in person and train. Absolutely. It, it's not It's not going to be the last time for sure. Oh, uh-uh. Well, well, Cliff, real quick, we don't have to go over the, the lengthy version because we're going <laughs> to point everybody back to our previous show with you. But give us a quick bio, buddy. Uh, yeah, man, it's like a uh, career in the Marine Corps, uh, career in law enforcement. Now I'm, uh, back doing, uh, federal LE stuff. Uh, that's my new gig. Uh, but that's pretty much it. 23 years in the Marine Corps, uh, you know, career in law enforcement. And now I'm on a federal contract. And, and a legitimate badass, um, black belt in jujitsu and, um, awesome at Muay Thai and boxing and weapons based environment stuff, man. It's uh, it we're trying to emulate you at some point, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're going to be really old, old and broken. <laughs> man, I, I, I feel it right now. This is like last week. I, I don't uh, know what I did because we weren't doing any leg attacks or anything. I guess it's been about a week and a half. And man, I woke up after jujitsu. I think it was two Thursdays ago. And man, I'm like, what in the hell did I do do to my knee? And I'm like grabbing onto the handrail as I'm walking down the stairs. Yeah. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> I'm like, this this shouldn't be that way. I'm I'm only 48. Yeah. And the kind of fight wear, man, it gets their knee sleeves. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, they they help a lot. Yeah, I've I've got something similar and I hadn't been using them. I've been yeah. using them again, and lo and behold, uh, I'm doing better. So, yeah. With that said, Cliff, what we'd like to do is kind of just go over <clears throat> some of the highlights of the of the class and kind of pick your brain about your choice of some of the formulation of the curriculum. Yeah. But f for the audience, it was really cool. The very opening of the class, Cliff says. All right, everybody grab gloves. And and the very first thing we do, we don't go into any technique. 
and and Cliff says, "All right, we're going to do uh, five three minute rounds of of boxing, and it was light boxing, um, actually quite light." Yep. Um, now I know I understand from the way you explained it, and also what what uh, we got out of it. But explain why you chose to do that first. Well, I mean, first and foremost, real fights start standing up. But you know, second, uh, really, the reason behind it is is males nowadays don't get punched in the face. So it, I'd rather experience that with friends than for the first time being you know, a real life incident. But uh, one of the prime reasons behind just having you put gloves on and touch spar is I get to see your footwork. That's really what I'm paying attention to is, is your uh, feet placement, your, your balance, your posture. And two, uh, five, three minute rounds. I tell you really fast where your fitness level is at. Yep. So, Absolutely. And, 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 you know, Cliff, I, I, I recognize a lot about both boxing and clinch and, and jujitsu. I'm, and what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of application in, in what you had us working on and what other instructors have us work on. But there, there's, there's something to be said about just simply sparring and simply mm-hmm. clinch work or pummeling or, you know, rolling on the mats that is just, it teaches you more than just the techniques itself. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah, to- totally. I mean, the thing of it is, too, it, it also, like the way I set up my training days, uh, it basically covers, you know, striking, clinch, ground weapons. But it, the way it's broken down, it, it it's designed the way I design it. So you know how to go back and develop your own program It's you know, it's like from a self coaching aspect, like my grappling was solid, but my striking just wasn't there. So I need to get more time at striking or vice versa. We know as I'm sitting here and, and for folks seeing this on video, I've got, I, I did a ton of notes from the class and it shapes a lot of what I'm doing right now. Awesome. And, and and one one of those um, obviously is that that I've started doing striking again uh, th- because of this class and and also because of um, you know more for a long time. yeah I'm just I'm just showing off. So being that I had a background in boxing and Thai boxing many years ago, honestly, Cliff, I got to the point where I was. And do I really need to strike anymore? And lo and behold, though, in any scenarios or evos that I was in, my <clears throat> boxing or tie boxing would come out, you know, just yep. from because it was myelinated. But yeah, so so I will tell you that that is one real positive side of, about that was that I have started working a lot of striking again. Aaron, what are your thoughts on that piece of the class? Well, it was interesting to me because um, one of the keys that Cliff told us is that pay attention to what your opponent's doing. If he's striking, you want to be grappling. If he's grappling, there's a reason for it. You need to be striking. And, you know, I've, you know, I took... Uh, tie boxing lessons from you, not seriously, but for a few years. And for the average accountant guitar player, I think I've got some decent, at least strikes, maybe, maybe not great technique, but, but I've got a little bit of a feel for it, but it, it still came out, you know, Cliff had to coach me quite a bit on a few things. So, but yeah, I enjoyed it because in a lot of the classes that we've taken, you know, they're definitely um, jujitsu and grappling, you know, focused, but having some striking and like you said, starting out sparring and getting a few punches in the face, it, it just helps everybody. Yeah, it, 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 it shapes you for sure. Well, and at that point, Cliff, you moved into, we went into footwork after that. So you, you took this time to see how we were moving. Yep. And, and putting us through a, a, a decent amount of rounds. And 
there's a little huffing and puffing going on. Um, and, 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 and a few people going, Hmm, what am I, what did I get myself into? Yeah. <laughs> um, those but, are the best kind of classes. Yeah. Yeah. You think that you think that at the beginning and then you go, man, this is a badass class. Yeah. At the end. And, and then you, you, one of the parts that really stuck out to me was the dirty boxing piece. Yep. Well, I mean, the, the whole dirty boxing is is knowing how to incorporate uh, striking from inside of, of you know one arm's reach, basically, like how to strike appropriately from grappling distance, right? Because if somebody's trying to, if it's a real life encounter and somebody's trying to grapple with you, you know, you should be like I said in the class, you should be asking yourself, did I print some way are they trying to disarm me are they trying to hold me until somebody else second party third party jumps in you know so if you know how to create that space by using strikes or shut down their grappling to set up your grappling on your terms you know that that's beneficial you know you have to prioritize you know what can hurt me most and if they're trying to grapple you know and disarm you that's you got to be able to shut that down and consenting to grapple isn't always the best decision. Well, and Cliff, an axiom that we all learned from from the class, and kind of something that Aaron was alluding to, is that if you're if you're in a grappling situation, you're trying to get your grappling going to mm-hmm. you know a proper control because you're either needing to deploy a tool or needing to, or more importantly, likely to control them that to use your striking to be able to open up your grappling or vice versa, yep. you know? Um, it, and that's an axiom that I really took away and I've got on my notes. So that was a, a real cool uh, learning point as well. Yeah. So, people, people won't keep their hands down trying to like, uh, you know, grab for your equipment if they're getting punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's just not human, human behavior. People are going to protect their, their computer. Yeah, so. absolutely. V- very good portion of the class. So at that point, we, you know, I'm kind of, we're kind of breezing over audience members. It, it, this is a lot of work going on, even just up to this point in the class. But then, then we, we moved into the clinch work, yep. which if, if folks are familiar with the shiv works type curriculum, um, close curriculum is, is very similar. However, the, the, one of the, one of the most important things to bring out about cliffs content is, is it's two days, but there's no live fire in, in the, the course. And, and what that does for us is that gives cliff more time, to get into a lot of the details that you may not be able to get for, and this isn't any fault to Craig, Craig Douglas in his ECQC, he's got to cover live fire. He's got to cover, you know, um, the stand up clinch, the managing unknown contact Uh, and, and and all the jujitsu stuff. So, so Cliff's able to, to cover some quite a bit of, of additional details in all of it, including the clinch. And, and so, yeah, that was something that, that, that I really wanted to point out for folks that are interested in get, getting into any of your courses. Yeah. But you really, you really took the time to correct um, any deficiencies in, in our clinch work. And, and, and I really appreciated, excuse me, appreciated that as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it doesn't make any sense to, you know, move on to different material if, you know, you're doing stuff less desirable. I won't say wrong, but, you know, it's like, because everything chains together. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, and, and one of the other aspects that I liked about your clinch work is, even just teaching the the kind of hips forward um, pressure, your drill focused on the you know 
changing levels and cutting the corner with the head. Yep. That was essentially the first kind of, if you will, opening drill. And, and man, that's, I think that's one of the best ways to, to teach that initial hip position and head position. Yeah, so I that, tell that people, was, was really you know, you, if you're, if you can see inside your opponent's ear, you have a dominant angle. So that's mm-hmm. kind of the gold with that. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was excellent stuff. And then I, I bring back up the point I made earlier. And then at, at some point, you know, we're, we're consensually drilling all this, this material, but then obviously you take it to where it's completely competitive. Both people yeah. are trying to win. And again, I, I think it's so important for people to seek out this type of training and it, in their own time, again, clinch work, man, it just, it teaches all teaches you a lot about yourself, your conditioning. Um, it teaches you a lot about the grind. Yeah. And, and again, it's these methodologies that it's not always about what it directly relates to self-defense, but also what it's teaching you mentally, you know, ha- having yeah. to grind through it. Your, your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like the and, – and the clinch work isn't like your traditional – Muay Thai plum clench. It's more of a, you know, maybe a single collar tie or underhook bicep tie or wrist tie, because uh, we're all in a weapons based environment, and you don't know if it's a weapons based environment uh, when the encounter initially starts. Generally, um, you know, but you have to assume it these days. So you want to control, you know, their ability to get to their waistband and control the hips. So, but yeah, you definitely. Uh, pummeling any kind of you know pummeling arm drags anything that requires uh the movement of another body is exhausting yeah it it, (laughs) it teaches you a lot and 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 that was you you just kind of hit it on the head i mean you you emphasized making sure that you're getting to the flank or getting to the back because those are desired positions right yeah, the, the back, when it comes to like, uh, you know, traditional street violence, the, to me, the back, if you can get to the back, that's the hierarchy of all positions. You totally know, agree. That's the safest way to break contact if you want to separate, but you also have so many options for control, uh, so many options to introduce uh, a higher level of force be a blade or gun without them interfering with uh, the weapon. Yeah. Outstanding. That that's also been my focus in my jujitsu too. As, as I've gotten a little bit older, I'm like, okay, what can I focus on yep. that will get me the most efficient way to deal with, with this, you know, either if it be street oriented or, or just, yep. you know, kind of sports oriented, you know, with my training partners, it's like, yeah, I started putting a lot of focus on, on taking the back and, and back positions. I'm not saying I'm great at it, but I'm getting better. Yeah. It's not that hard. I mean, when it comes to, to grappling in general, it's like I was working with a a brown belt uh, yesterday, Tuesday. And, uh, you know, basically it's like, I told him if, if if I can see the back, I can take the back. Hmm. You know, so that's kind of, you know, the simplistic way. So all you got to do is expose the back. And if you know how to create obstacles so they can't flatten out, you can take the back. Yeah. And and you reminded me of something that you also, I I had this in my notes uh, later, but I'll I'll bring it up now. Speaking of taking the back, one of the most awesome um, points that I learned from you is um the saturday night ride yep. <laughs> yeah i mean and and i've been playing with that and, and i mean you know, a lot of this stuff obviously i've i've added to my game but um i think that's important for folks to understand too is that you know and this is this is how you pointed it out it's like hey if you take the hooks and and their belly down mm-hmm. your your legs are pinned right yeah I mean, you're giving up mobility for hooks. Yeah, I, I don't. I prefer wrestling rides over over hooks. 
yeah, that that was that was a big eye opener for me as well. well that, that's well, funny. Go ahead. I was I was watching that clip today, <laughs> kind of refreshing my memory, and and it was about you were talking about staying away from the grape vines. Yep. And, and then how how that grape vine was intended to um, break someone's posture when or on their their um, pushing leg or um, bridging leg, so yeah. you can cross face them back down on the back and more of a. I think you said it was more of a wrestling technique to keep yeah, someone the, pinned. The whole, but the whole grape binding thing from Mao is just it's it's a pinning ride. You know, but jujitsu guys that don't know how to wrestle for the most part, you know, they, they give up mobility and, but I mean, it's so easy to untangle those grapevines. So, you know, it's like, I prefer like prayer feet. And then when they go to bridge, that's when I grapevine that, the, the bridge leg basically and take it out of play. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm yeah. I'm remembering that now. I need to make sure I keep yep. that in my notes. Well, you, well, Aaron, did you have anything else to add on the on the clinch work? And then I'll kind of hit on what we did as the Evo after well, the clinch work. Well, when it comes to, I'll, I'll be flat honest. Um, clinch is is not my strong point, and. I kept feeling a little out of sorts on the clinch stuff. I, I can pummel a little bit, but it, it's it's something I'm going to need some coaching on for sure. I need yep. to I need to um, refresh my memory, especially going through these these notes. And I will say this to any listeners that take Cliff's class, um, anybody else that offers similar great content that is is this, um, you know controlling an individual and, and possibly a weapons-based environment, take your camera, take your, your phone and video every demo and then go back and transcribe some notes because I didn't video any of the clinch stuff, I, but I videoed all the ground stuff. And man, I've, I've taken some really good notes from that, but I highly suggest that because I started going back and forth trying to take notes write notes as you were and i think at one yeah. point you were like aaron where are you going <laughs> <laughs> taking notes man well you hey. know that is you know right there though the, your your comment though that just showed uh you know told me saturday was a successful day because you know clinch is something you need to focus on a little mm -hmm. bit and that's kind of how you know, my one day and two day classes are set up. So you know what you need to focus your training on a little bit, how to self coach, how to develop your own program. Yeah. It, it, I'd like to take this material again sometime soon. And then, you know, for one thing, film the, the demos and then really work it and, and get some coaching from you on it. Yeah. Well, I, I would have taken more film, but Cliff was beating up on me the whole time during the demo. Dude, no joke. And do you guys remember a couple of times? Aaron paid Cl me for that. Cl he didn't Cl tell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there were a few times, Eric, you were out of the room and Cliff grabs me and starts doing some. No, dude, this is the wrong twin. I'm not to do demos on. No, no. <laughs> we can, I, I, started, I started tapping before he even started the demo, man. Just get ahead of that. And, and I do I do remember one time I kept seeing you either go grab your notes or go go grab something outside. And I, I came out there, Aaron, do you remember me going, hey man? I I learned my lesson. Cliff Cliff got on to me a couple times and yeah. That's hey, good. Aaron, I'll, we'll, we'll I'll move into the Evo discussion um, here just one second, Aaron. But, bro, when we're in uh, at KR training for the the advanced uh, instructor development class, man, we'll spend some time in a hotel, bro. I'll, I'll help square you away on the clinch stuff, man. Sounds, I'll get you. Sounds sounds good. And 
On that note, I hope he puts you and I together so I can coach your ass off. <laughs> Be mean to you. <laughs> so, so Cliff, there's one detail again because I was, um, I, I was a, a part of the 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 demos quite a bit. So there was one part of the uh, the evos and one of the drills that I still have a little bit hazy. And I wanted to correct it on the air. Um, the good guy, bad guy drill that we did from standing, uh-huh. we started with both both um, individuals had their hands up. Now, the good guy <clears throat> was trying to keep the bad guy from deploying a weapon. That yep. was the main goal, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that I had that correct in my notes. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't an equal initiative. Just no, because what sure. you see a lot of times, especially like in if you watch YouTube videos of real violence, you know, bad guys, once they start losing, they'll create that space to get to their weapon system. So, you know, once you make contact, it's not always a good idea to break contact. So that's kind of the focus of that, that first scenario we did. Very, very good description, Cliff. And so I want to describe uh, that that I think this is very important for folks to understand. And as as I progressed in some of this, the, the value of kind of play drills, if I if I'm if I'm using a term correctly, it, you know, it's that kind of thirty percent. Um, you know, you're, you're you're not trying to win, you're not trying to lose. Yeah. Um, but that's what you had us do at the beginning. And we weren't using uh, UTM or Sims at that point. We're just yep. using blue guns, but you really emphasize, Hey, you know, this first piece we're we're just kind of, we're, we're, we're light contact, excuse me, light um, resistance and kind of plain, you yep. know, and, and you had us do that throughout all the drills. But then when we went to the final Evo, then it was competitive. And then it was all out. And I, um, I still tell people like you shouldn't go harder than seventy percent. Yep, you know, seventy percent is it. a solid competitive pace, but it's also at a pace where you can recognize the opportunities that your opponent's providing for you. I, you I'm, know? I'm real, real glad you mentioned that seventy percent because I I wrote that in my notes that um, I'm trying. Let me get to it. So you essentially said, yeah, hard training should be at about 70%, not yep. 100% was what you said. Yep. I, I, mean, I that, really that, think that applies to everything. I mean, you'll see people, you know, you'll see people in gunfights missing with the whole magazine because they're shooting out of fear, which causes them to shoot faster than their skill level. It's the same thing with empty hands. You can go faster than your skill level dictates if that makes sense you know that's why i say 70 percent. it's a still a good competitive pace but when you're trying to learn a new skill you can still see the opportunities that's that your opponent's providing for you well cliff i'd like to comment and and double down on on this discussion about the 70 percent i think that some gyms would do well to make sure that they're emphasizing that before every drill I'm, and yeah. what I mean by that is emphasize what the level of pressure should be, yep. and and that and again keep reminding folks that man you're this isn't a hundred percent and and, and I kind of point towards there's been a few times recently on the mats where I'll roll with folks that I haven't rolled with before or um or infrequently and it's like I'm still trying to figure out why in a, in an, in an open school setting, why some folks feel like they got to go 100%. I just don't get you know, it. But. I wanted to ask that too, man. I, I know you just asked it, Eric, but that, that was on my mind. How hard is it for guys to, to understand that? Well, um, you know, the thing of it is, is like every time, um, I roll with a lower belt and, you know, <laughs> it, I always ask them, what are you working on? And it's amazing, nine times out of 10, uh, their response is, I just want to roll. Okay, well, you're always going to suck. 
you know, because practice has to be deliberate practice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you train twice a week and those two days a week, you focus on a different thing that you need to improve on, you know, just having, having your partner, Hey, uh, let me start down. You start mounting. And maybe the second day is like, Hey, start on my back. You know, that's eight things a month that you improved on, you know, 96 things a year that you fixed, but everybody, I just want to roll, you know, it's not deliberate practice and, you know, they end up getting injured or they get their blue belt and quit. Yeah. Well, on, go ahead, on, on that note, uh, let's see here. On deliberate practice before I practice guitar. Yep. I write a, I write a plan for Your what goals. I'm doing. Yep. And, and then it, so that I make sure that I'm, I'm working on something new and then whatever I worked on that's new, I make sure I write that down yep. because I play, I play in any given month, I'm playing 200 major parts, right? Yep. So, so I'll forget what, what I'm working on and then kind of get bored and, and just roll, you know, yeah. and, and having the plan, I'll, I'll refer back to that. And it's like, oh yeah, I mean, that, that was a really cool, cool thing to work on. And um, yeah, I mean, I got, I got training journalists going back to, I was like nine years old and I'm 55 here in a couple of weeks. Awesome. You know, nowadays I have an app on my phone called BJJ Logbook that I documented everything still. You know, cool. Every, you, know, you know, I still go to the gym four or five days a week and every time I have something I'm going to work on, it'd be a takedown, it'd be, you know, something, you know. Well, that that's awesome mentorship advice for, for our audience members out there that maybe, maybe, they, maybe they're a little newer in this path or maybe – Maybe they're stagnant. I yeah. think that's awesome, uh, an awesome tip. And I, I will say it, it. I've got a group of training partners that think that way, yep. and it's probably why my training has been going so well. Yeah. Um, but I still run into, and they're good buddies too. That 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 still still prefer that. Hey, let's just roll, and that's cool. But but we co- we commend people to to look at that deliberate practice for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a time to just roll. I mean, if you're training for a competition or or something, but, you know, even when I was competing, you know, competition, I was training my game plan. I wasn't just rolling. You know, it's like, hey, this is, this is what I'm going to uh, try to set up as my first takedown. If that doesn't work, it's going to flow from here to here to here. And then when it goes to the ground, this is the ground game plan. So, I mean, well, still, even in competition, I've always been about deliberate practice. So, let me ask you this, because I'm going to confess here. A lot of the time, I am that guy that says, I just want to roll. Yeah. And to be, and the reason why is because in the system that I'm in, dude, I'm, I am probably a few months away from Blue Belt. Mm-hmm. So and I've come at it slow because I feel I have so much music going on and, yep. and shooting, etc. But so I've been doing it for a while. But our system at my school, you don't really start rolling until you get to my level. Yeah. So so I'm still inexperienced at rolling, but so that begs the question. For someone like me that 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 needs to think in that uh, that deliberate practice mode, do do I start in kind of low concepts like you know just simply trying to escape from guard, well, starting I, from what do you I, suggest? I, I would pick, like I said, if you go twice a week, each, each day you'd go. I would pick something that you feel least comfortable. Like, hey, today I just I'm just gonna focus on escaping them out. You know, and then maybe the second day you go, like, I'm just gonna focus on uh defending, you know, with somebody on my back. You know, escaping from from a back ride. 
you know, or whatever, you know, that you feel like uh, you need, you know, it's like my white belts and and, uh, when I, that I was training in Texas, it's like as a white belt, I don't even want you looking for submissions. I want you to uh, learn how to feel where your opponent's weight is and learn how to move, you know, Mm -hmm. feel and move. And then, you know, once you get your blue belt, then you should get really good at defending stuff. You know, then purple belt, you can really start chaining your attacks together. That way, when you do get to your brown belt, you know, you have a complete game. You know, Man, but I, I've known people who's made it all the way to black belt and they couldn't teach one single wrestling takedown. They just yeah, sit on that, their ass. That's a travesty. Yeah. It's like, how do you make it all the way to black belt and you have zero takedown game? Th- that's one of the things that I love about my gym, Cliff, is that in – in the Daybreakers um, 06 class, we always warm up with takedowns. You know, it starts out light and we get a little bit um, more committed. And then at least once or twice a week in no gi class, you will be starting standing yeah. and and takedowns. Um, yeah, that's one aspect I love. Uh, you know, shout out to to uh, Lee King and and his program that he's running at, at – uh, at uh, Team Rock uh, Southern Pines, it, but, so yeah, that's a very very good point, Cliff. Well, I, I will say this because I'm, I wanted to circle back to what you said. You know, I'm not I'm knocking on on purple at some point, and I ju- now I've always had some form of a plan. You know, because mm-hmm. I I keep a steady notebook. I mean, I've got currently right now I've got like three notebooks that I'm running jujitsu notes in because of the way that I the way that I program my notes. But one of my coaches who runs the 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 morning class, Adam Adam Lamp, shout out to him. Every time I roll with him, he's like, "Hey, w- what are you working on, brother?" And so it, it really made me start thinking, okay, every time that I'm rolling, I'm, I'm absolutely going to have a plan. So I keyed in on what you said, yep. Cliff. And it's so cool when you got good training partners like that, that make you think better. Yep. You know, and it's like, it's funny because, you know, it's like, you know, we got quite a few black belts at the school I train at it. And it's just like, and the owner, Scott tell, tells the younger belts, like you should take advantage of the black belts here, you know? And it's like, I tell them, like, if I don't make you better down the road, I'm not going to get better. You know, it's like, I'm only as good as my training partners. So it doesn't do me any good to go in there and just smash a lower belt. So I feel good about myself, (laughs) but you see that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You do. I, um, you know, that I am new to rolling. I, I was pleasantly encouraged when I um, roll with a couple of our higher um, ranking members and including the instructors. And, and he said, man, Aaron, I've, I've never rolled with you. He goes, man, you're so controlled and, and, um, and, you know, finessed and et cetera. And, and, I think it's because I already, I may not be great at JITS, but I've been training a lot of stuff that I know, I know where the learning occurs and it's not, it's not going full out. Yeah. And, um, and so, but it's all, so that's kind of circling back to your 70% comment and, and Eric, it also kind of makes me think of some of the um, matches that we had, matchups that we had in the class. Is that kind of where you were going to go with this? Yeah, go go ahead, Aaron. I'll I'll let you hit on it. Well, to, okay. So th- this was kind of a funny one for me, and it, and it was it was some because still some of those guys weren't listening either about you know pr- how much pressure <laughs> they should use. One guy, he was super cool, but. Dude, he started treating my head like a speed bag. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I was like, after I took about, I don't know, man, eight shots, I was like, dude, this is, I'm done with this. I, I was rearing up a right cross about to nail his ass. 
and, and it, at least I was going to try because it's like, dude, this yep. is this is training. You you're yep. we're not in a street fight, but I don't know if you remember that or not, yep. Cliff. Oh, I do. I because when I was rearing up, I don't know if you noticed me getting pissed or not, because um, <laughs> you stopped it right before I could line that up. Yeah, that's I mean, and that's why I stopped it. It's like, uh, you know, training should hurt. It should injure. Uh, and when you got people that don't know how to train, uh, yeah, I, I just I just call it. Well, and and and, you know, Cliff, this is further. Actually, it's it was the one of the last Evos, um, which we'll hit on again here in a second. But I, I and I have it on video. You were real good, um, like during my. I don't think myself and the the several partners that I had that we were bad about you know going hard, but you were still good about saying speed, no follow through. Yeah, yeah, that that was solid, and I I, I remember hearing you say that you know during the Me evos. Too. Yeah, and I mean because you know how many shots can your C spine take of your head going back and forth? You know, yeah. so. Dude, yeah, that, that's yeah. what I felt like in that situation. Yeah. I could I could feel it. Better. Yeah. And I, I don't want to sound like a big baby, but that that was that was just yeah. something I'll never forget. <laughs> well, and that's just something that, as trainers that you have to pay attention to and just, you know, call out a role or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Just call it out. Call yeah. call index, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, well Eric, if you have a story, go ahead and, and go into it because I've got another one in mind too. Um, well, um, no, Aaron, go ahead because I was just going to kind of close out the 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 clinch portion and move into the grounded stuff. So yeah, well, just go th ahead. This is a, this is about grounded, so we'll talk about okay. that later. So, so I'm just going to close out real quick, so folks, if they're curious, okay, what are we talking about in the clinch? And so, um, Cliff covered very heavily. A, a very Greco based, but still considering the weapons based environment, your underhooks, your overhooks, your arm drags, wrist ties. It's a, you know, to use the phrase, it's a hook and tie game, right? Mm -hmm. You know, controlling the hands in a weapons based environment um, is the most important because that's where the tools come out. We got to control that and control the hips, right? Cliff. Yep. And, and so, and, and you, you gave us some, Awesome escapes to the back and tie ups that gave us the opportunity um, to deploy a weapon in the evolutions. Just out outstanding curriculum and, and the way that you coached that for sure. Uh, I appreciate it. It's like I, like I said earlier, man. It, it's really just uh, show you how to develop a game. So uh, when you do get lucky enough to go train with Craig and do an ECQC, you kind of have a you know game going into it yeah people would do very well to be in your class before an ecqc but i i must add that if they have done an ecqc and they want to want to expand their class they must get in your class as yeah. well you, you know 100 percent. that's what i was thinking eric yeah so aaron let's let's move on to the grounded stuff if you want man just let's We'll jump into your story, and then I can hit on some well, of the details. It, it was one. It was one of my um, one of my. I don't know. We, we're. I guess we're simply calling them evos, but um, but it, it was about one of those that that was fun. But um, you you go ahead, and if you want to start going over some of the techniques. Well, one of the things that stuck out to me, and it, I think this is a crucial aspect of you know, let's just call it you're grounded, right? Because we're mm -hmm. not just looking to go to the ground, right, Cliff? No, I mean, you ended up there uh, usually uh, not by choice, yep. you know, it's, and, you know, whatever happened, you got sucker punched, uh, you know, slipped on a banana peel, um, <laughs> you know, whatever. You ended up on the ground uh, with, you know, with no – forethought of you know going to the ground now you have to you know unlike most people like you're just not going to get up so it's really how to develop a plan to uh not lose on the ground and eventually get to a more dominant position yeah yeah it was d definitely 
gravitated that way. And, and, you know, I, I will digress a second because I, I kind of breezed over that piece. You, you spoke about um, the sucker punch. Uh, I think any, any curriculum worth its salt includes dealing with the sucker punch and, and Cliff absolutely um, spent quite a bit of time with us dealing with the sucker punch and, and having the default position um, yeah. that, that, that we used in that segment too. Now, if, if, if for some reason you get, did get sucker punched and we went into the grounded piece and one of the, one of the parts that stuck out to me is one of your recommended methods of dealing with a circling opponent was using small, small shrimp and, yep. it, it, you know, just small, small shrimp and and movement in that fashion than just always using the the um leg piston method which i still yep. think is absolutely valid yeah but man that just i love i love that that shrimping movement man that that was a big thing that i took away for yeah, sure yeah that, that that was huge and and i've been i've been every chance i think about it i, I just work that thinking about the circling opponent or when i'm training with partners that were Working yep. anything like that 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 was money big yeah, time i mean that's that's my go-to i mean I, I teach the uh you know the the base leg i guess and the the drive leg but um the thing i don't like about that way to keep in front of your opponent is you know you kind of have a leg or a foot up in the air <clears> and it <throat> gives them something to grab onto so i prefer yeah. just a small hip escapes and you know, it, you still achieve the same goal. Yeah. Small, small hip escape, small shrimping. <clears throat> um, it was money and you had us, you had us go do it out on the gravel, which gave it a, a yeah. perspective that was really cool. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I don't know who brought that up. Like, I don't think this would work in the gravel. Like, oh, okay, let's go try it out. <laughs> oh, did one of the, uh, did one of the, did one of the guys say that? Yeah. I, I, and I it worked that. great. Yeah, it, it, it actually works. Great. It actually works better. I think so. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. And Cliff goes, "Ah, oh, let's go outside." I didn't know that somebody said that, which is fine. You know, yeah. people are inquisitive, yeah. and that's yeah. part of the process. Yeah that that was that was money for sure. <laughs> and and then at that point, which is again another crucial aspect of of uh, being grounded is is how do you deal with a person over you? And you gave us some solid. Yep. Um, fundamental sweeps, you know, like yep. um, the tripod, the sickle, and um, the the uh, double knee sweep. Yeah, that, double ankle know, sweep. Yeah, double ankle. Yep. Excuse me. And 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 we worked that quite a bit. And and again, it's it's funny how often some of us have been doing that, doing those sweeps over the years, and it's like, and I, I learned several aspects of those that that really cleaned a lot of that up for me as well um and you got any thoughts so far no i don't you go ahead and keep going oh uh, no i do w one of the things i know i know we're kind of i might f make a skip around here but one of the things that stood out to me was simply your rear naked choke mm -hmm. grip on the shoulder Yep. Man, that I've been using that and people people can't get out of that and they think what the heck what the heck are you doing, yeah. man? Yeah, it, it it's funny because a lot of people think, you know, from a rear naked choke standpoint, like it's just I don't know, kind of like squeezing with the arm, but if you move your elbow towards your down towards your hip, it just oh, you know, it makes it so much tighter locks it in man yeah <laughs> and, and and also you had a starting that with an arm wrap a, yep. a, a standard arm wrap and then starting the rear naked yep. um grip that yeah that's that was outstanding i i've definitely been using that and and using it for setting up sweeps for, yeah, for you're, sure you're, i mean a rear naked choke is just just clenching that that grip yep um or set of levers i guess um around a circular body part why not use it around somebody's shoulder or um, bicep you yeah. know Just, yeah i i love that and i i showed it to my wife and she said not to show anybody at the school <laughs> <laughs> 
don't don't give that secret up. Is that what Becky was oh, saying? Oh yeah, she that's exactly what she that's said. That's awesome. <laughs> that, that's a that's a good thinker. Let yeah. love Becky, man. Tell her hello, by the way. Oh, she she's probably my biggest teacher, man. She's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and Cliff, you gave us a, a, a very good improved Oompa, you know, really, really emphasizing the bridge first and and then the full yeah. rollover, you know, not not letting the hips go back to the ground yeah. um, d- during that process. That's like Another one of the biggest, detail. biggest errors, uh, common mistakes you see uh, people making when they're trying to get get out from the mount. Yeah, that that was that was an awesome detail, and 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 folks should should try to add that to the to their game for sure. And then we moved into man, you you gave us some solid guard recovery or or retention. I mean, I I, I would say that's the first time in in a class like like this that that the instructor provided some guard retention stuff. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you, it's, it's, once again, it's another survival position, you know, and it's like, it's one of those deals where, you know, it's like Cecil Birch said, you know, you, you don't have to win, just don't lose. Yeah. So, you know, oh, that's like, one of my favorite quotes from Cecil. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's one of those deals where, you know, it's like, like if you know how to, set up like a, the stockade position from guard. It's a really good rest position, you know, and then that sets up sweeps and stuff like that. I know one thing that came to mind and as I was watching one of the clips today and it was maintaining the mount, but you mentioned that the mount and the um, side control really should be transitional in nature now could, could you expound on that a little bit yeah i mean in a unknown threat environment and this really comes from uh working south central la in the projects but it's like uh the mount and side control is a are two very dangerous positions because it's so easy for the bottom guy just to wrap and hold you to a second or third party jumps in and starts treating your head like a seal pup in Alaska. So yeah, no good. Know, they have to be transitory, you know, like, it, like from side control and mount, I usually always transition to a scarf and then, you know, ended up taking them to their stomach and then go to a back ride or setting up some kind of choke from there. So yeah, the, the key is that it's not that you're maintaining. It's not that you're, not wanting to main control it, it's wanting to main control where they can't hold yeah. you in any way yeah. that, okay that that totally makes sense yep. yeah you're just taking their ability to to wrap you up and like basically like and, and you see it i mean even the uh you know bellator ufc you'll see the guy getting pummeled from the mount and he just box and hugs the guy you know until the referee gets bored and stands him up well, and Cliff, when you're talking about a scarf hold, um, and I think I remember you describing this or having us work some of it, frankly, but just to refresh my memory, you're talking kind of like a gift wrap position. Yes. Yep. 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 Like going into a technical mount and then forcing forcing a back take. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah, man, that's huge. So, so guys, um, is that some sort of twisting arm control kind of yeah, thing? Yeah. So basically, like. Uh, I'm bringing this arm across here. Then I go under the head and grab the wrist. Yeah. And I, can, yeah. I can push and drive you belly down. Yeah. Okay. You know? and, and you're, and you're calling that a scarf. And mm-hmm. um, I mean, you could call it a gift wrap, but gift uh, wrap scarf. And, and yeah. what did you oh. call it? A scarf? Um, something. You, I, I, I think he just simply called it a scarf hold, yeah, I think is what you were talking about. Scarf hold, yeah. Yeah. I'm literally just That's curious there. from the different yeah. terminologies. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a ton of, you know, I'm sure there's 10 other things people call it, but yeah, yeah. I just know it as a scarf from wrestling and uh, jujitsu. I think they call it more of a gift wrap type position. Yeah. And, and I mean, and I you consider know. the fact that if for some reason you've got to deploy 
a tool from the mount for some reason yeah. you're you're in that position and obviously as a as a right-handed shooter I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking to to you know either use my chest or or um, my hand to pass that and pass that gift wrap over and and grab him with my left hand turning him over so if I need to to access that tool I've got complete control of him at that well, point, the thing, right? Well, the thing about that too is like even being a right-handed shooter, if if my right hand is controlling their left wrist, as soon as I get them basically on a side, I usually transition to a knee ride on that top go. shoulder, mm-hmm. which keeps everything away from me so I can transition. And Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. exactly what I was – I guess yeah. maybe instinctively thinking it's like yep. once you get them on, even on their side, yeah, you, transition got, to a knee ride, and and you've got the timing um, for that that draw um, for some sort of index shooting yeah, ready because, to go. I mean, once again, you're at the you know hierarchical positions with the back tag, so you oh, know it's yeah. going to be really hard with you driving uh, pressure into their their shoulders to turn into you even if they have a weapon and and even if you just held it we know even if you could only keep that hold for yep. two three seconds you, you you've got bullets in meaty bits yep for yeah. sure you know yeah. if you just got a blade that scarf really opens up you know the uh, the heart region and stuff like that. So you got some really good stabby areas too with it. My next opportunity with uh, with some of my training partners in in dealing with the weapons based environment. That's going to be my choice. Drill is working working exactly what we're talking about. Yep. Cool. Um, so so it's going to be difficult to go over every single detail cuz we're getting a, we're getting close to an hour now and we got other but, stuff to chat about yeah we we got a few other things to talk about but but I want to talk about two really good drills for um for the grounded stuff that I, I again I am I'm fascinated by any drill that revolves around kind of this play mm-hmm. you know and, and and that kind of that 30% 30 percentile yep. range and so i'll just talk about uh two two of the drills you had us do grounded and one of them what was where another good guy bad guy to where um the the good guy um is simply you start on knees you know not because we're <clears throat> we desire starting on our knees it's because that's the way the drill starts you know in that environment and and essentially the the good guy is simply trying to keep the bad guy from taking your weapon but mm-hmm. you're doing kind of you're doing basic rolling you yeah. know fairly light rolling and you're just trying to keep the other person from taking your tools yep but you also added a second person and it wasn't anything crazy um but if if the good guy got preoccupied, you just ask ask the the um, second person to go up and just tap him on the shoulder. Yep. And and the cool part about that drill, and this is very similar to a it it's different, but similar to a drill that Cecil had us do, is it's a low key version of maintaining awareness of a second opponent, and yep. I thought that was brilliant. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's one of those deals where, you know, you have to assume, especially if it's a, you know, true criminal predator, that there's a second person probably involved. Oh yeah. You know, and if it's not, then then it's even better. But you know, you can't get so target focused that you know you don't <laughs> see that person coming up. You know, to to get involved. And man, that is so difficult to do. Yep. I, I, I until you start do, in, until you get in that drill, you don't realize how hard that is to do. It is. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll do it. Like even like uh like when I was in Texas, like 
uh, you know, with a group there, it's like we would do it, you know, every couple of weeks, just regular rolling. You know, it's, it's like, I would just walk around the, the mat and I would drop a gun, drop a knife, you know, <laughs> and then one of them gets to, gets to use it basically. So. Yeah. Uh, r- really excellent drill. And, and, and the other drill again, in that same kind of modus operandi was you, you essentially had a start <clears throat> in a 50, 50 position, essentially, um, knee to knee, you know, reverse from each other. You're looking at each other yep. and, and one person has a pistol mm-hmm. and the other person grabs the muzzle yep. and then go. Right. Yep. And, and, and again, the intention was not to go hard at all, but just, you know, roll and try to figure out how to either strip or retain the pistol. Yep. And, and, and you said something towards the end after we had went through several of them it is, is you said, well, see, um, essentially in that drill, everybody starts figuring out how to retain and or strip the pistol. Yeah. It, it just, just completely facilitated the learning process. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it doesn't take, you know, uh, there's to <clears throat> me, there's no need to go take an, you know, uh, eight hour or, you know, a two day weapon retention class. It's kind of self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. It, and 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 <laughs> really, mean, you guys, you guys should you know figure that out on your own. But at the same time, absolutely, I, I agree, Cliff. But you also were laying that foundation through the entire course, right? Yeah. Would you agree? Oh, you're yeah. laying the you're laying the foundation to once you place that drill, which was towards the latter end of the class. Yeah. Um, you've already been doing clinch work. Yeah. You've already been doing grounded work. You, and yeah, so yeah, that that was that was one of my um favorite takeaway drills from well the from other the, the, well. the other thing behind that mm. type of drill, and I'll do it inside of cars too, is like it shows you the importance of earning the draw and shot. Mm-hmm. If you introduce that weapon out of fear and you haven't earned the draw and shot, I mean you're gonna end up potentially fighting over that weapon. And that's, that's not a good thing. So, you know, get control before tools. Roger. Absolutely. You, you drove that home for sure. And, and, and there were times where we made mistakes doing that too, yep. you know, and you were real good about correcting that. Um, and it is what happens. You end up fighting yep. over the tool. Yep. See um, it all the time. So, with that, um, you know, and again, I, I want to make sure that there, there was a lot more going on than what we're describing here. We're just kind of hitting some highlights and we had a couple of final evos and I, I have to admit, and Aaron, I'll let you, um, chime in on this. My, my favorite evo was the confined space drill. Oh yeah. Out in the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the main reason is because number one, um, I've not done a confined space drill like that before. And number two was the, was the exponential learning experience that takes place in that confined space. Yep. And, and just to give a description for the audience um, out there it is essentially what Cliff had us do is if you're the good guy, you face the wall and, and l- let me digress a second. We're, we're in a hallway and there's one sections um, sectioned off or cordoned off with some some mats, and then of course the other side is maintained by either um, participants and or a cliff, and you're stuck in this area. And and the good guy starts with his face, you know, facing the wall, and the bad guy has his hands on your shoulder, and Cliff allowed the bad guy to initiate with in basically any method he wanted to either a strike or a takedown or, or, or what have you. And then you gotta, you gotta try to deal with the problem. You got to correct the the situation of you being in a deficit. And I think that's the important aspect of it yep. is, is you forced us into a deficit and, well, yeah, and that I was mean, very it, enlightening. It's one of those deals. Like, you know, everybody talks about awareness, but Hey, 
we all know life gets involved. I mean, there's times where, absolutely, you know, heck, you know, Monday almost drove into a school bus because I was trying to not spill my coffee. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like it's like, damn, how did I not see a school bus? But uh, anyway, you know, but it's like it's like you're getting into your car and then all of a sudden somebody's at your door, you know, type deal. So and that's kind of the premise behind behind that. And, and uh, taking away space, you know, it changes everything. Even your draw stroke changes. Well, and and, and just for, you know, full understanding, of course, Cliff um, had both of us. And when I say both of us, any, you know, each, each um, set of Evos were two individuals, both having um, UTM or simunitions uh, pistols. And also whatever um, drone knives they had or whatever they had on them. And so everything was fair game at yeah. that point. And one of the things that really stuck out to me is that in in the two e- Evos that I did, and I, I feel horrible. I'm, I'm honestly forgetting my opponent's name and that. I'll, I'll, I've got him in notes. So forgive me. I'll, I'll correct it and put it in the show notes. But our first, um, our first go together, um, we were almost completely purely grappling. Yep. And and then the second time, both of us opened up our strikes, and it yep. really it really opened up. Frankly, what both of us were were working, and yep. and that was that was a big eye opener to me, and frankly, one of the biggest reasons why I came back home and said. Yeah, my striking is coming back into my training cycle. Yeah, striking is a great way to set up your grappling on your terms. Yeah. Yeah, that that was that was a lot of fun and 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 Aaron had a damn good Evo in that too. Yeah, he did. Um yeah. <laughs> that was well, a scramble. Yeah. Well, and and so that was that was one of the things I wanted to comment about is that Again, one of the great things that Cliff does in his teaching is to put you in these confined spaces when it's available in his training, wherever he's having his training. And having that wall was awesome. Yep. And and in one of my um, matchups, um, the the guy actually was new to all this, yep. but he was tenacious, yep. and 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 he almost immediately did a um a typical um leg sweep and took me down and he was controlling me for quite a while and then all of a sudden it occurred to me there's a damn wall right there <laughs> and, and I put I put my feet on that wall and yeah. I turned him over on his back and was able to thumb pectoral index and yep. and finish it but the key is that it was funny. I know I'm in this training environment where, where we're supposed to be fighting in this, this confined space. And literally in my mind, I thought, damn, there's a wall there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, yeah. that was, that was, that was a fun ending to that one. Yeah. I mean, you got to understand the environment you're operating in and, and use it to a tactical advantage. Well, and, and Aaron, I, I, I'd like to comment and, and yes, your, your opponent, man, he was, he was a transformed individual yeah. during that class for sure. Yeah, and, I love and, it. And, and, and I'll tell you, um, I don't know if you guys knew this or not. And I, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because how awesome he performed throughout the, the, the course, but before the first Evo, he, he was, he was close to hyperventilating. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, and, and I and I went up to him and said, "Hey, bro, you, you got this. You know, just think about. Yep. You know, you, you got this. No big deal." And of course, he he chilled out. But the only reason I brought that that is not at all. Um, I, I really think it's more to point out how that that experience is so real. Yeah. And and so so uh, so extraordinarily. Um, teaching in that in that method that that I just wanted to bring that up because yeah he was 
he he was he was definitely feeling it because he had never been. That was the first time that the that the the UTM marking cartridges yeah. came out. But man, he he he, yeah. he sucked it up and did yeah. awesome and yeah. And by, this, performed. by the end of the second day, he was crushing it. Yeah, yeah. That that's what's one of the coolest coolest uh, aspects of these types yeah. of courses. And, and and if individuals are out there on the on the fence about doing courses like this. You'll be a better person by doing it, and yeah, yeah it's it, awesome it's, experience. It's not hyperbole to say that these weekends will change your life. Um, they'll change your your training focus, and they'll make you realize how much tougher you are than you think you are. Yeah, um, just showing up to one of these events now. Th- they are not the agogi. You know, that they're you're not gonna get the crap beat out of you. You may get some bruises and and you may have a guy like me, you know, go a little bit too rough on on some punches, but man, it all makes you better. Yep. And and I, I wanna stress enough, I, I wanna really stress that people have to get to Cliff's classes. Oh, I um, appreciate it. Cr- um Cliff isn't on here. He he didn't slip any money under the table. We we went to we simply loved his class, loved his instruction, and he really needs to 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 teach more people and um, people more people need to seek him out. So we're we're going to do our best to make sure that <laughs> that people people learn as much. I mean, we don't have a huge audience, but we yeah. we got a little bit of a throw. We're going to keep driving at home people need to to seek cliff out and and this was a nut just like ecqc just like cecil's coursework um cliff's um complete combatant is another life-changing class so we really appreciate you inviting us out to that cliff well, no, it, was, it was great you guys could make it man it awesome. oh man I, I think I think we should probably segue into a little bit of firearms discussion because we're getting long in the tooth. <laughs> Aaron, you want to start this discussion? Yeah. So, so Cliff, that when we showed up, you 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 kind of had a big smile on your face, talking about how y- your new gig that you get some ammo and you get the shoot for a living these days and, yep. and, and help other people be, become better shooters. And, and so can you explain that you're, you're an instructor at the federal level and, and we'll kind of keep it, you know, tied down to that, but um, yeah, it sounds uh, like a blast. Yeah. I, uh, I, I want to get in on that gig, but you know, I, <laughs> I don't have any, I don't have the credentials for that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. I got contracted as a firearms instructor at a, a federal le level and uh yeah it's it's unlimited rounds so if if you know if i'm not shooting i think last week i probably shot last week was kind of a low round count week i probably shot about 900 rounds last week but <laughs> uh but there's there's been weeks here where i've gone through almost four thousand rounds in a week so 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 what you're telling our audience is you get ammo Provided by your um, employer, the, your contract E or contractor, I think, and you get to shoot and get paid for it. Oh yeah, it, it's the best job I ever had. Uh, yeah, it's like if, if I'm not actually physically uh, shooting, I'm teaching other uh, LEs to how to run a gun, a uh, rifle, pistol, shotgun. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. Cool. I'll be honest. I pictured it just as pistol, but you're you're going through the gamut. That's awesome. Yeah. Today I was with uh, a certain group, uh, and we were just. I mean, we just spent four hours working uh, rifle to pistol transitions. Nice. So yeah, it was it was a good day. We're, we're a little jealous. Oh, that's that's what I said, man. I, I want to get in on that gig, but you know, I don't, I don't, I'll never have the credentials, so I'll just sit back and dream. Yeah, we'll, we'll no, just keep it, being it, training junkies. <laughs> hey, man, it's like now, now I'm getting paid to train, so I, I can't complain. I, I, I mean, I, I'm surrounded by by some 
national caliber dude. So yeah, you, you, you know. have, you have a, a couple of GMs, uh, grandmasters yeah, in there, there's, USPSA, there's a few right? of them here. Uh, yeah, the one of, one of awesome. them, uh, here, he just finished, uh, he just shot, uh, nationals or he finished like fifth or something like that in the nation. Uh, yeah, he's doing like uh two second build drills at 25 yards clean. But that's, that that's like freaking cyborg stuff, man. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, is is he is he an alien or something? Oh my god, yeah, it's it's amazing watching the, uh, watching that dude shoot. So, man, and, and you you get to rub elbows with him, and you're no slouch yourself, but you well, get I that mean, opportunity it, 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 to. Yep, I tell you what, though, shooting, getting on a line, and and you know, training with those guys just shows you like the level of, you know, what's capable of basically, I mean, they're on a different planet. So, <laughs> so that, that's kind of like when the person, I don't even forgive me. I don't remember who did it, but the first person to do the four minute mile, which was thought yeah. to be impossible. And then yeah. now that's kind of a basic that's thing for a slow. lot of people. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of slow now. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I'm, we can talk about some standards I was looking at um, today here in a little bit, but um, you know, so, so I, I think I shared a picture of this badass pistol that you had. Yeah, Did, my Sakato. <laughs> oh man, <sighs> love it. You, I, I left genuinely mad at you for letting me fondle that thing because then i went on their website and and went okay i'll i'll probably get another pistol than that (laughs) (laughs) but that thing was was a freaking ferrari oh Oh, yeah i think shoots way better than i do just dry firing it was heavenly man yeah i mean it's (laughs) it's a beautiful gun yeah i'm looking at because some of the uh, people I work with now, they're uh, uh, Sig three twenty uh, folks. So it's I'm looking at. I never owned a, outside of a P two twenty six. I haven't owned none of the new Sigs. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So and, and forgive me to digress here, but do you do you ever teach with your staccato, or do you teach with the issued weapons? No, I I run whatever uh the students have got it. oh, I, either, I remember you, you know, saying that at dinner when yeah we i remember now I, remember. You know, I mean we're starting to see more uh you know red dot pistols uh at the federal le level in a couple of years it'll be across the board it, w- what's the percentage of those uh, of your students doing dots god it's actually quite a few there's probably at least three or four agencies that are running dots right now. So, and it, awesome. I mean, it, it's going to be across the board probably in the next few years. Uh, right now, the ones that don't have dots are testing dots. So they just haven't nice. figured out which one they want. Well, Cliff, one thing that I, I really take away from our discussion when we when we talked about this at, at dinner that evening and what we're talking about now is it really it really pumps me up that we got gentlemen like you and your partners um, teaching federal law enforcement like that because that just man it it, it makes me um, real proud that we got we got guys like you um, hooking up and and teaching you know, our law enforcement, man, that's, that's badass. Yeah. It, it's, it, I'm, I feel pretty blessed to get to do what I do. So, but yeah, it definitely, you know, you don't have to twist my arm to run a gun every day. So <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And, and I, I have to bring, this is a major digression. What, what was that hamburger place? Do you guys remember the name of that place? I don't even remember right now. It doesn't matter. Oh, that place man, was it, amazing, though. <laughs> that was that was good. We had customer we had, service was outstanding. Oh yeah, <laughs> superb. Yeah, that's facetious, right? No, I mean the, the nope, lady that it was. Right, the it door, was. See, I, I, I yeah. can't forgive me. Then, then I think you went straight to the bathroom, wash your hands when when the uh, 
the lady, it seems like the owner of the place came up and greeted Eric and I. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I agree, Cliff. Um, she was incredible. Yeah. And her staff was the same way. Yeah, yeah I was impressed with what we'll, we'll have yep. to. We'll have to remember, um, rack our brains, or maybe look it look it up and put it in the show notes to make sure that if anybody's around the Birmingham area, that they go oh, yeah. and patronize that place because yeah, the owner she was outstanding. It was good food, and we, yep. we had we had been abstaining from eating crappy, and uh, and that was a treat because we had busted our butt that day. So yeah, that, that was, was good. good stuff. Yep. Well, well, Eric, ahead, I, I guess since since we're on this subject of shooting, Eric, our buddy Greg, you know who I'm talking about, and um, he he and I were texting back and forth a little bit today, and and t- he had he had gotten a new Tinacore holster and a, and a Tinacore Abdo, uh, oh nice, you know, magazine uh, pouch, and he he was excited to tell me about it, and, and you know, asked me a few questions about a couple of adjustments, et cetera. But then, then we talked about getting together next week and he said, Hey, let's go ahead and, and try out the, um, the modern samurai, um, Scott Jelinski's black belt, uh, standards. And and I got on there. So, so let's, let's go through this guys. And, and then I think you have a comment to make on this cliff, right? Um, Yeah. So the, so, um, we'll call him Jedi right now. That his his black belt standards, he, let's just say, all are from concealment. Okay. Now let's see this. That and these 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 particular standards need to be shot in succession, one through four. The first um, the first um, drill is it's called the three and two drill. It's at three yards. Three shots to the um, A zone, and then transition to two rounds on a three by five card. Par time two seconds. <laughs> okay, and then the next one is a one shot drill at seven yards A zone, one second par time. Sub second. And, and then a third is a bill drill at seven yards, six shots A zone, of course. Two seconds. And then the fourth one is a single shot at 25 yards, and the part time is 1.5 seconds. Legit. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now, my draw, I'll just flat out on and say, I think my draw is okay, but it's only at 1.36 or so. And so and, I'm. I'm, and, I'm and, at, and then doing 1.5 at 25. Oh, yeah. It, that's it, impressive. That, if yeah. I was rushing, if I was rushing to do that, I could probably do it in four seconds, man. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and, and try these standards and hopefully I'm cause he's also got the blue belt, purple belt and brown belt standards. So yeah. you can and see where you are. I'm hoping I get to purple belt, but I may still be blue like I am um, in jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. Last time I, I trained with Scott, like, you know, the sub two on the bill drill. Yeah, that didn't happen. I wasn't even close. Uh, I was like a 247 or something like that, but still good. Uh, still outstanding. Uh, and the uh, one, one, one second from appendix, I think I was like, you know, 110 or something. I mean, I've hit sub second draws before, but not consistent. The 25 yard actually isn't that, that difficult. Okay, so, well, at one point five, I guess. Yeah, if, it's not that you've... difficult because, uh, like we, here here at the Fed level, we we took uh, part of our our testing to be a red dot instructor is his standards plus a second. So for us, it's it's uh, one hit at twenty five yards in two seconds, and that like when I first did that, after doing his standards, I thought two seconds was slow. Yeah. So, and then the three and two drill, uh, it's three seconds here instead of two and three seconds seems like it's all day after trying to meet his sub two. 
Well, I'll just comment about all this discussion because this this kind of this kind of encourages me to to as far we we just talked about earlier. What what am I going to work on tomorrow? So, um, I'm teaching our defensive pistol class this weekend, and and I'm it's been one of those weeks where it's been hard to get, get everything done. So I mm-hmm. went ahead and um, took a couple of days off starting tomorrow and Friday. Um, so I could make sure I'm I'm fully squared away for the class, and I'm gonna go shoot tomorrow. And I had some particular plans, but I I, I think I'm gonna add a couple of, couple of these drills um, to to my training tomorrow and see how it goes. Yeah, I mean his uh, Scott standards is like 13 rounds. I mean, so you know it's not a high round count, and it's some it's actually really focuses on speed and accuracy. So. Yeah, that's pretty solid. That's cool. Well, and I don't know. We may have talked about this, but I've I'm in his um, red dot instructor class. Man, I'm sitting there forgetting. I think it's in November. Oh, it's in October, bro. I think. Okay, think. Yeah, you remember it better than me. I've got it in my calendar because I I know I can't go, and I was ticked off, so it sticks out. Yeah, I'm doing that in July, July second and third, I think. Awesome! You can give me an AAR offline yeah. just let me know how it goes yeah well man i lost my train of thought it'll come back to me here in a second well well i man i i think we're getting towards the end of the show aaron unless you yeah. uh got anything I, else i agree I now i, I know what i was gonna say um since we were talking about our range plans tomorrow so tomorrow i am gonna go through these standards for fun and then I, so Cliff, you might remember, so I only have to wear these glasses um, for doing the computer and, and reading. I had cataract surgery, so I've got bionic vision past about three and a half feet. Oh, nice. But before that, before that, I, my vision was so poor for so long I didn't focus on shooting at 25 yard bulls at all. But the other night, it was one of the first times I've had all in the black at 25 yards. And then I re- it, I realized how much I was missing on that. Since you're going slow and accurate, you're, you're building strength in your platform. You, you're, I know you, you you're seeing the target, yeah. but you're but you're really your your brain brain gets hyper focused on what you need to see. Yeah. I, I just encourage anybody if you especially if you've got the vision to do it, man, work on that simple thing. Yeah, um, a I, bull, mean, a bull I mean, at twenty five yards, it, it 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 opened my eyes, and and I'm so I'm going to spend about half my time tomorrow. That twenty-five yard bull. Yeah, I mean, here in our advanced pistol stuff, we'll, we'll shoot B eight drills at fifty yards. Mm. Nice. So that's that's yeah, that really, you know, it's like I had a had a kid today who was struggling at the twenty-five, and you know, as we work our way into the three, he was like, you know, it's like oh, I do really well from like the three to the seven. I'm like, no, you still make the same fundamental mistakes you suck at the three it just gets exposed at the 25 very good you point. know you're still doing the same fundamental flaws with your grip and trigger it's just it doesn't it, get exposed until you get to the 15 and 25 because a cone of fire opens up it's, i was going to say it's it's the cone of of um of fault and yeah. I, I can't think of another word i don't want to be mean but it, but it's the it's the cone of error, right? Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, it's. I'm just going to encourage people. You know, I know that's not tough for a lot of um, our audience, but man, with my new vision, I'm excited to work on that stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because the 25 yard line won't lie. That's for sure. Damn mm-hmm. right. <laughs> and, and and it's interesting that that we bring that subject up because. Um, I said this on the air not too long ago, and and Cliff, you might want to slap me through the through the t- the. I was going to say TV. Good God, <laughs> Heidi, man, <laughs> through the video. Um, 
is that I went five months without firing a live round um, yeah. just recently because um, we had moved here and I haven't gotten a range home because I've been on a waiting list. Yeah. And and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to dry fire. I'm going to save some ammo. And and I'm thinking that this membership's going to come through and it doesn't. Next thing I know, I was like, man, it has been five months. I can't I can't do this crap. So now I'm back to once a week because because our normal routine was once a week. It had been for yeah. for several years. And so now I'm back to I didn't lose a whole lot because, you know, it's our mantra on this show to dry fire, you know, yeah. on a regular basis. But I did. I certainly lost some. Um, Bro, I, at, at at five months, you sound like a gun owner. Yeah, <laughs> not a not a gun, sh- not a shooter. Yeah, I tell you, <laughs> I it's like gun a gun owner. It, it's it's <laughs> interesting though how you know a daily dry fire schedule will still keep your skills pretty on par. You know, you don't lose much if you dry fire. Man, t- twenty it's twenty a, draws or twenty. Um, 20 press outs and trigger presses or five to 10 minutes anywhere in that continuum, man, it's awesome. I I, even, you know, I don't know what you try to do cliff, but man, five minutes a day, keep, keep some skills and, and going for sure. Yeah. It really depends on what I'm focusing on. I mean, like I said, in in this gig I got, I, I touch guns eight hours a day, but, I still come home and throw my staccato and spend 10, 15 minutes working on something. Awesome. I, I usually yeah, follow, awesome. uh, you know, the Ben Stoger's dry fire yeah. book. Oh, it, that, I, that thing's awesome. Yeah. I have that his, book his is incredible. miniature targets. Yeah. I got his yep. miniature Same targets here, up brother. in my garage. So, yeah. So works really I can't well. get to mine right now. Actually, I got one yep. hanging up right exactly. here. But. Yeah, I got them all. <laughs> so. But you know, it's like what I'm. Uh, yep. I, you know, it's what I'm figuring out though. It's like I've been running a red dot since 2012, and now going back to iron sights. It's like to me, red dot shooting actually has helped my iron sight shooting. Man, that's, that's cool, encouraging. Man. You know, because now because that- your presentation is so much flat, you know, flatter with a dot, so you just pick yep. up the front sight way faster as well. So. You, you know, well, Cliff, it, I am I and Aaron. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's fine. Um, Go you ahead. Know, I'm a I'm a new I'm a new dot shooter. Um, but you just said something that um that was a complete epiphany to me earlier in my dry practice mm-hmm. because um and this this isn't necessarily the best method, but um so. I was using the, um, so I had two section of drills that I was working earlier for my dry fire. One, I started with the, the range master, a bullseye course. And I've, I've got a, a scaled, uh, B eight bull that I have marked out in my, um, bedroom, um, to where it it's equal. You know, I've got equidistance. I know where my 25, I know where my 15, so on and so forth is. And so I shot that or dry fired that I should say. And then I, I shot some, some standards that I keep up on myself, but I kept switching between my, my uh, 19 with my dot and grabbing my cert pistol. Cause there's times where I know, you know, we, we all, all of us that are knowledgeable about dry fire, we're going to, we're going to still press the dead trigger but I still like to get that full trigger press. So I kept several times going between my cert pistol and you hit it on the head. Um, cliff, I noticed that I was picking up my front sight much better and at a much better trajectory yep. because of my dot work. That's, that's yep. a profound statement you made because I didn't really yep. tie it together until you said that. Yep. So, well, yeah. be- before we let you go, then Cliff, one one last question on that: how it's helped your irons shooting. Now, let me ask you this: are you are you target focusing still? Depends um, on the distance. Out mm-hmm. to uh, probably fifteen yards, I, I'm I'm target focused with the rock, rock on. You know, uh, 
15, 25, depending on uh, whatever that course of fire is, it, you know, target focus or site focus really depends on the level of accuracy that's yeah. needed for. So, yeah. Now l- let me ask you this is, did that change from the dot or did you always shoot like that? I was, I mean, I've always been a target focused shooter. Uh, you know, like I said, like I never became like a hard front sight focus person in, mm-hmm. unless uh, it required that level of accuracy. Yeah. I, so this just brings up and an just a real quick point that, we had a conversation with Craig Douglas about this and, and he, he just simply brought up, he, he goes, maybe we've been teaching irons incorrectly by pushing people so much for that front sight. So focus, maybe we should have said, okay, further out in the level of accuracy you need, yeah. maybe, maybe focus on the tip of that front sight, but man, otherwise, look right through those sites and, and see that yep. target, you know? Yeah. So just, just an interesting topic, you know? So, yeah, I mean, your best shooters in the world are target focused shooters. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and I never knew that until I was talking to, um, to Scott Jedlinski and he said, yep. yeah, man, Mike and, you know, Mike C. Klander and, and Rob Latham and Stoger, that they're all target focused, man. Yeah. Why, why the heck didn't they teach us that, man? Yeah. Uh, well, Eric, we've had a good time with Cliff as we knew we would. And Cliff, when you get down to Texas again, if, if whenever you're home, man, let's let's think of a time where we can have a freaking man camp down oh, at your place. Freaking awesome. Yeah. It's on. We'll look at start it, looking it, at some dates. Oh, I'm serious, yeah. man. Get yeah. get some dates. Yeah. Because cause you're you're flipping four hours away from me. That's nothing. Awesome. Yeah, it'd be so, a good time. Good yeah. time. What, what I would like to end with, Cliff, is you know, to our audience members, um, Cliff has been a huge supporter of our show from the get go. And 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 we're we're certainly proud to call um Cliff um coach now and we really appreciate your men- mentorship cliff and we really appreciate your time buddy oh i appreciate it man always always humble man to get to and, and how, how, with you guys thank you and and i just didn't want to skip the opportunity how can people get a hold of you and, and get down with some of these classes uh, it, uh everything's either on uh, instagram or facebook uh hill country combatives uh on Instagram and, and a Facebook page, or you can just, you know, look me up. I'm on both, both platforms. So. And but as always, uh, I'll put, I'll put in the show notes yeah. for any audience member. You, all you have to do is swipe up and you'll see yeah. Cliff's information. Uh, get into to one of Cliff's classes. Um, he'll make you harder to kill. Absolutely. Amen. Well, you guys, you guys have a great evening. You guys too. And we'll, we'll, yeah, Cliff, get, get us some of those dates, man. I, I ain't yeah. blowing smoke, man. That'd be so awesome. Do it. Yeah, we can set something up. <laughs> Rock on. All right, guys. Yeah.